Alrighty, so today we're going to take a look at this nice case large stockman or a jumbo stockman with these amber jig bone covers. This isn't really a, a in-depth review, it's just me pretty much giving a show and tell of my knife and me cutting random stuff with it. Some useful and some not. I thought it would be a fun video. So just some quick specs of the knife. It is 4.25 inches closed, so it's a pretty big knife. And it has this standard, the three blades for stockmans or most stockmans have the clip point as your main, a spay blade and a sheep's foot. This one is in carbon chrome vanadium steel. I know case recently changed to 1095 carbon, so a little upgrade. So no more mysterious chrome vanadium for case, I believe so. But this knife has very good grip as far as the size. It's a good size for me for everyday tasks. And I love using the sheep's foot and clip point mostly. Uh, the spade blade, don't really use that much. I, I was considering about changing the spade to an awl, grinding it down and having a nice point to it, but haven't really decided yet. I'm not sure if I have the skills to do that and make it look decent, but maybe. But a very nice knife for sure. This one retails for around $60 to $75, depending where you get it. And I think it's definitely worth it. I think Case makes an excellent stockman. I did sharpen this knife before this video, so it's pretty sharp. And just to start off, I'm going to start cutting random things. So I'm going to start with this apple. I'm going to skin it because I love skinning it. It's kind of a challenge trying to skin the whole apple in one long piece without breaking it apart. So I'm going to fast forward it four times here because it takes a while at the concentrate. It's pretty hard to do this with the camera in front of your face and try not to cut yourself. But I, I did a pretty decent job here. I know some of you have tried this and have done it. It can be challenging depending on which knife, but it cut with ease. Nothing crazy. A quick disclaimer, I did polish up and clean this knife before the video to have it nice and shiny for you. So a lot of the patina, the original patina that I had before did come off, but these, these fruit juices will add a newer patina. And after I cut this orange, I'll show you a look at the newer patina that's formed. It forms pretty fast. I'm gonna keep cutting with this nice clip point blade because it's long and it cuts these, these larger fruits with ease. But with this acidic, more acidic orange, it will patina the blade a lot more than the apple for sure. Cutting fruit is probably my favorite use for traditional slip joints. It's pretty nostalgic for me because my grandpa used to cut oranges from his orange tree with his Camillus GI knife that he was issued in the military when I was a kid. And he, would, he wouldn't use a cutting board, he would just use a newspaper and cut the oranges and then give them to the grandkids and he would just wipe, it, wipe the blade off with this shirt. I remember that pretty vividly, but I'm going to show you the patina real quick. So you can see just from cutting the apple and orange, it's already developing a patina on the carbon blade. You can see that darkish tint on it. And the longer you let the juices sit on the blade, the darker your blade will get. But next I'm going to start to whittle some basswood. I got this basswood off of Amazon. There's like a pack of 12 for like a few bucks, pretty cheap. I've been trying to get into whittling more and more. It's something that I've always wanted to uh, try. And I've seen a lot of YouTube videos of some very talented whittlers make some crazy unique things. So I just, I've been doing this every once in a while if I have some time to kill or if I'm waiting for something. And it's, it's pretty fun and just challenging. It's definitely a learning curve, but uh, it's something that anybody can pick up that has a simple pocket knife. So I'm using the sheep's foot blade right here. It's cutting the knife or the, the wood with ease. Um, it's kind of like butter. It is a soft wood, but I think the sheep's foot is, it's almost taking off too much, too much wood. I really like slip joints because like I said before, they're nostalgic and there's such a unique and rich history with slip joints in general. Um, I really like opening and closing the knife. There's just something about that snap or the so-called walk and talk when you open a slip joint, it's just, I don't, know, I don't know how to describe it. It's just like pure awesomeness. Slip joints also force me to slow down in my everyday life. 
we all know there's more efficient flippers and automatic knives out there that you can open and close in 0.1 millisecond. But I enjoy the process of opening a slip joint and using it. Any excuse to use my knives, it's it's a joy, and I'm sure for a lot of you it is. Any Anybody that asks for something to be cut, we're jumping to use our pocket knives and show them off. But I'm going to give some love to this Beyblade. blade. I'll, it has more belly to it, so you can get more deeper cuts into the wood. So next, I'm going to attempt to make a quill pen out of this turkey feather. I got this off Amazon, a 12-pack for like 5 or 6 bucks. I did watch a YouTube video on some guys making pens out of quills, so I thought it would be fun and silly. So let's get started. So I know the pen blade was originally used for cutting or sharpening quill pens. Obviously this Stockman does not have a pen blade, so I'm just going to make do and use my sheep's foot and clip point for this quill. The sheep's foot I just used to cut off the tip, and then I will do the rest of the work with my large clip point because it's, it's just larger and I thought it'd be easier. So please bear with me. This is maybe my third attempt at making a quill pen and the other two were pretty horrible. Uh, I'm by no means an expert at quill making, so please be easy on me guys. Um, I did take off one side of the quill to get that nice flow for the ink that can be used. I'm not gonna put ink in it, but Basically, I'm taking out the middle of the feather to make room for the ink to flow out of. I'm then gonna kinda shave off or cut off the sides, the clip point, so to have a more fine edge for the pen. Alrighty, so there you have it. Here's probably the worst quill pen ever made. <laughs> Not sure if it would ever work, but I don't have any ink to test it out. All right, next I'm just gonna do some pulling cuts with my sheep's foot blade on this eBay bubble wrap bag. And what was inside? Oh, you guessed it. It was a knife. I don't remember which one exactly, but you know, 80% of my smaller package, packages that I receive, there's a knife inside. But easy, easy cuts with the sheep's foot. And then the most ultimate test. The paper cut test. This is for you office warriors out there that forgot their scissors at home and need to cut some paper. I'm just kidding. Um, obviously this knife is still sharp because I didn't really use it and I did sharpen it, but it will cut paper with ease. This chrome vanadium steel is pretty known to take a nice sharp edge. Obviously this is probably one of the most tactical knives I have. Easy pocket drop, easy retrieval quick and fast just like that whoo i'm not sure if you guys saw that or not but i'll do it again whoo and then whoo -hoo. yeah lightning fast and then lastly i'm going to cut off some tags off my newly purchased pants i'm in government work so i have to wear nice clothes every once in a while and nothing's more annoying than these little plastic tag holders that require a knife most of the time if you don't want to ruin your clothes. Alrighty, well, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed that video. Some of it was silly, and some of it was actual stuff I use my knives for. But like and subscribe if you like this video, and check out my other traditional knife videos. See you guys.